Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and today I wanted to make a quick video on creating a 2D map of a construction site using the Phantom 4 Pro V2 and Measure Ground Control. Measure Ground Control is a great piece of software because it offers a lot of high quality features at an affordable price. Now, I'm not affiliated with Measure in any way, that's just my opinion. It lets you plan your mission right from your home or your office, it lets you fly your mission automatically using their downloadable app, and when you create the 2D map it uses Pix4D's render engine which is really high speed and cool also. So uh, let's go ahead and get started, and don't forget if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. If you don't already have an account with Measure, you'll want to go to their website and create an account. It's free to sign up, and you get two free maps per month. After you log in, you'll see this screen. The interface is intuitive, so I won't go over every part. For this demo, my first step will be to create a flight plan. You'll be presented with a map that's a lot like Google Maps. You can zoom in and out, click and drag the map area, and choose map and satellite layers. I'm going to type in the location I want to create a flight plan for. The map loads and I pan and zoom to the area I want to use, which for this demo is the large field just north of the cinema. Once you have the general area you're going to be working in displayed in the mapping window, click Start Planning here. The grid will show up on the map. This represents the area your drone will fly during this mission. You can adjust the flight area by clicking and dragging the control points at the corners, and there are also control points in the middle of each line segment that can be dragged to wherever you want. The distance of each line segment will appear in a small box on the line. I'm going to make the flight area large enough so that it extends beyond the actual construction site boundaries. This is important to make sure I get good coverage of the area I want to map. Flight settings are displayed on the left of the screen. You can accept the defaults or fine tune them to your needs. I'm going to give my flight plan a name that will make it easy to recognize. Overlap between your images is important to make sure you capture enough data to make a map without any gaps or holes. The amount of overlap and the altitude you fly at will depend in part on elevation changes in the terrain and height of any structures. That's a little outside the scope of this video though, but as a rule of thumb, I like to use 80% overlap on both front and sides. Based on the drone you use and the overlap and altitude settings, the program will automatically select a speed. You can adjust this, but I'm going to accept the default. You can change flight direction by using the slider but the north and south grid works fine for what I'm doing today. There are advanced settings you can adjust, like how the drone behaves when the mission is complete, and I recommend you have a look at those, but I'm going to accept the defaults here again. Just below the advanced settings button, you see the estimated time of flight, the acreage the drone will cover, and how many images it'll be taking. I can go ahead now and save my flight, and then if I decide I need to go back and change anything, I can just click Update. I'm going to go ahead and create a mission that I can associate this flight plan with later. I give it a meaningful name. There are several types of missions to choose from, but I'm just going to pick General. I set my flight dates and times. I enter the address of the location I'll be shooting. And I could check the airspace here as well, but I already know that it's golf where I'll be flying, so I'm just going to check that I've verified it. And then click Create Mission. It shows up in my list of missions, and I'm ready to go to the site and fly. Once on site, I launch the Measure Ground Control app on my device and click Flight Plans. You have the option here of choosing grid or waypoint flights, or you could use CSV or KML files. If anyone would like me to do a video on creating KML flight plans in Google Maps, then using those files for automated flight and measure ground control or DJI Pilot, let me know. I may make one of those videos anyway. But the flight plan that we just made was a grid flight, so that's what I'm going to tap now. We could create a new flight plan right here on the app, but I'm going to scroll down to my saved plans and choose New Construction, Taze Valley. You see the flight grid show up on the map, and just like the map that we worked with on the computer, this map can be scaled and moved 
and the flight plan can be modified. I'm just going to pan so that I can see the starting point on my screen. Then tap Next. We're presented with the settings which we already took care of during the initial planning. I see I have 80% overlap both front and sides and I see the drone will fly at 8.2 miles per hour. You can also scroll down to confirm or change other settings. One thing to note, when you first get on site, make sure that the altitude you've set for your flight plan is adequate to clear any structures or hills or trees. Once you're satisfied, just tap save and fly. Now the software will take over and check the aircraft, camera, and battery. If everything checks out, you'll get green icons and the fly button will also activate and turn green. At that point, you can tap fly and the drone will launch, move to the starting position, and begin flying the route and taking photos automatically. The screen has a picture-in-picture -picture display, and by default, the map is in the main screen, and the drone's camera feed is in the small window in the bottom right. You can toggle this display by tapping the small screen. This will make the camera feed the main display and the mission map will be in the small window. You can pause or stop the mission using the controls on the left of the screen. Pausing the mission will hover the drone in place. Stopping the mission will cause the drone to automatically return home. You can resume the mission whether you have paused or stopped it. If for some reason you need to take immediate control of the drone, you can toggle the switch to Addy mode, then back to whichever mode you want to fly in, and you'll have manual control. Information is displayed on the left of the screen like altitude, time remaining to complete the mission, acreage, number of photos taken, number of photos remaining, and how far the drone is laterally from the home point. As photos are taken, small camera icons appear on the flight route to show you exactly where the shot was made. Info displayed on the top of the screen includes how many GPS signals the drone is receiving, the controller's remaining charge, drone's remaining charge, and the drone's speed. If a battery change is needed during a mission, the drone will automatically return to the home point for the change. During the change, you don't need to turn the controller off, just the drone. Once a fresh battery is loaded into the drone, the mission can be resumed. Once the mission is complete, the drone will automatically return to the home point and land. With the mission complete, we can now process the images taken and turn them into a 2D map. Open Measure Ground Control on your computer again, and this time click Process Data, then click Get Started. You can create a new mission at this point, but we're going to work with the mission we created earlier. So I click Use Existing Mission, select the mission name New Construction Taze Valley, then click Get Started. We're now prompted to give the data product we're creating a name. For consistency, I'm choosing New Construction Taze Valley, then click Select Imagery for Processing. A window opens that allows us to select our imagery. I choose Upload File and browse to the SD card containing the photos. I select all of them and click open. The photos begin to upload, which can take several minutes depending on the size of the job. Once the upload is complete, click done. Then click next. We're presented now with three processing options. You can read through them yourself. For this demo, I'm choosing standard processing. Next, we're taken to a screen for selecting the data output. For the type of flight plan I executed, the optimal output will be 3D maps, which includes ortho mosaic output. If I wanted a 3D model, I would have flown a crosshatch pattern with my gimbal at a bit of an angle. 
At this point, we can review the images we've taken superimposed on a map to discard any pictures from the data set that we don't want. But I already know that every shot that I took today should be processed, so I can skip this step. Next, we can confirm or edit our choices, then click Next, and then click Submit for processing. Measure Ground Control will send an email when the processing is complete, or you can check the progress by viewing the mission. After about an hour and a half, the processing is complete and I can view the 2D map. Now I can either copy a link, which is what I would do if I needed to share this map with a client, or I can view the map directly in PIX4D. When the map displays, the ortho mosaic we created is overlaid on a map. You can see right away that everything is very accurate and matches up perfectly. On the left of the screen are layers that can be activated or deactivated. And on the right of the screen are settings for the selected layers. So if I select Ortho Mosaic on the left, on the right I can control its settings. Zooming in, you can see how detailed these maps are. And there's no angular distortion. Everything looks like you're viewing from directly above. One of the most useful features of these 2D maps is the ability to make accurate measurements. The measurement tools are located in the upper right of the map window. If I select the line tool, I can start a measurement by left clicking, then moving my mouse to a new location and clicking again. I can keep doing this for as many line segments as I need. In this demo, I just want one segment. To terminate a line, you just double click. On the right of the screen, you see the measurement data. By default, it's in meters. You can change that by clicking this icon in the lower left of the screen and selecting US Imperial Units. You see the information in the right of the screen has updated. Also in the left panel, our line segment now shows up as a layer. I'm going to go ahead and delete it by clicking the trash icon. Whenever you deliver a 2D map to a client, you'll need to have a known scale on the ground that you can measure to confirm the accuracy of your map. I didn't use a scale for this demo, but the width of the parking spaces in the cinema parking lot can be used. The width of a parking space is 9 feet. So if I make a line segment across a parking space, it should be nine feet or very close to it. And as you can see, it is indeed right at nine feet wide. So that's accuracy to within about an inch from images taken at 300 feet, not too bad. Other measurements you can take include area, radius, and volume. At the bottom left of the map window, you can toggle between 2D map view and 3D map view. The 3D map renders in, and for being shot with the gimbal straight down, it isn't bad. This map can be rotated and zoomed, and the measurement tools can be used as well. If I would have flown a crosshatch pattern, the 3D version of this map would be clearer and more detailed, but it would have taken at least twice as many images and longer processing time. The flight pattern you choose to fly will all depend on the deliverables you want to give your client. A layer that can be particularly useful for construction and agriculture is the DSM, which stands for Digital Surface Model. This layer uses color gradation to represent differences in terrain elevation. You can see here that the lower the elevation, the darker and cooler the color. The higher the elevation, the brighter and warmer. So at a glance, we can see that the treetops just above and to the right of the zoom tool is the tallest object on the screen. The opacity of layers can be adjusted by clicking the drop icon and adjusting the slider. It's easy to see how this information can be super useful to a client and Measure is an excellent tool to capture this data. So that's it guys. If you haven't tried your hand at 2D mapping yet, I hope you download Measure Ground Control and give it a shot. Thanks for watching and fly safe.